In this video, we're talking about how to find the greatest common factor of a few monomials, and we've been given three examples. In the first example, we've been asked to find the greatest common factor of our three monomials, 5, 10, and 20. And let's just go ahead and clarify a few terms here. Monomial, remember, means just one number. Mono meaning one, and nomial meaning number, so monomial is one number. So 5 is one number, 10 is one number, 20 is one number, so these are three monomials. And we've been asked to find the greatest common factor among these three monomials. The greatest common factor is going to be the largest number or the largest number of factors that divide evenly into all three of our monomials. So what we want to do to find the greatest common factor at its most basic level, and we'll get faster at doing this as we get more practice, but what we want to do is break down each of our numbers into their prime factors. Then we'll take all of the factors that these numbers have in common and multiply them together to find the greatest common factor. So here's what that looks like. 5 broken down into its prime factors is just going to be 5, right? 5 is already a prime number, so the only factor of 5 is going to be 5. 10 broken down into its prime factors is going to be 5 and 2. 20 broken down into its prime factors, if we do first 10 and 2, and then from 10 we do 5 and 2, notice that we have 5, 2, and 2. With our monomials broken down into their prime factors, at this point, we're looking for the factors that are common to all three of our monomials. So if we start at the top and we look at this first factor here of five, right? So we'll look at five here. Is five in our other two monomial numbers? Yes, it is. We have a factor of five here and a factor of five here. So because this factor of five sort of matches across all three monomials, it exists in the breakdown of all three, we can include it in our greatest common factor. If we look at this next factor here of two, we can see that we have this factor of two involved in the breakdown for 10 and also a factor of two involved in the breakdown for 20, but we don't have a factor of two involved in the breakdown for five, so we can't include it in our greatest common factor, nor can we include this sort of second two that's involved here in the 20 because, again, we still don't have a factor of two involved in our breakdown for five, which means that the only thing we can include in our greatest common factor is five. So the greatest common factor for five, 10, and 20 is going to be five, which means this is the largest value that can go evenly into five, 10, and 20. Let's go ahead and look at a slightly more complicated example here. We have the three monomial numbers 6a, 6a squared, and 12a cubed. So we've got now a variable involved of a. We need to break these monomials down first by looking at these constant coefficients. So first we'll look at 6, 6, and 12. Then we'll look at the variables for a. So if we break down 6 into its prime factors, the factors are going to be 3 and 2. If we break down 6 here into its prime factors, we're going to get 3 and 2. If we break down 12 into its prime factors, we'll get 4 and 3, and then break down 4 into 2 and 2. So what we'll end up with is 3, 2, and 2. Now we need to look at our a variables here. We have just a single factor of a. We can't break that down any further, so we have this factor of a. Here we have a squared, which we can break down into a and a. And here we have a cubed, or three factors of a, so we can break that down into a, a, and a. So now our monomials are completely factored into their prime factors, and we need to go ahead and look for common factors. So if we start with this first factor in 6a, we have 3, and we can see that we have 3, 3, and 3. That factor is common to all three of our monomials. We can see also that 2 is a factor which is common to all three monomials, so we can pull that out. We have this extra factor of two for the 12, but we don't have that extra factor of two involved in either of these first two monomials, so we're not gonna be able to pull that out. So we're gonna go ahead and skip to A. We notice that we have a common factor of A in all three monomials, but we don't have a second common factor of A or a third common factor of A because even though there's an additional A involved in the 6A squared and the 12A cubed, we don't have another factor of A to pull out of 6A. So that means that all we can take is the 3, the 2, and the A. So we can pull those three things out, and then what we're going to do is multiply them together. And when we do that, we're going to get 3 times 2 is 6, times a is 6a, so we get 6a as our greatest common factor. If we look at our last example here, we're going to do the same thing that we did in the second example. In other words, we're going to look at these constant coefficients 4, 2, and 10, and break those down into their prime factors, and then look at the variables. So for 4, 2, and 10, we'll break down 4 into 2 and 2, We'll break down 2 into just 2, and we'll break down 10 
into five and two. Then we need to look at our x's. So we have x squared, x, and x. Well, we can break down x squared into x and x, but we can't break down x at all, so we just have x here and we have x here. And then for y, we can't break that down at all, can't break it down at all here. And for y squared, we can break that into y and y. So now we've got our prime factors and we need to look for common factors. Notice here that we can pull out a two from each of these, so we'll pull out the two. We can't pull out a five because five is unique to this 10x y squared. Five doesn't exist as a factor in either of these two monomials. We can't pull out this additional two, but we can pull out an x from all three. So pull out an x from all three and we'll get that down there. And we can pull out a y from all three. So there's a y, a y, and a y, and we'll pull that out there. We know that we can't possibly take out anything else because notice here this 2xy, we've taken every factor from the 2xy, there's no more factors we can take. So it'd be literally impossible for us to pull any other factor into our greatest common factor. So then we just multiply our results together and we say that 2xy is the greatest common factor of 4x squared y, 2xy, and 10xy squared. Now I wanna make sure that we be careful here with this video because in these three examples, we took out a five, which happened to be our smallest number. We took out a six A, which in a way happened to be our smallest number here. And we took out a two X Y which happened to be sort of our smallest number. But that won't always be the case. It won't always work out that the smallest factor that you have here is gonna be your greatest common factor. And we can illustrate that by changing this 2xy here to, for example, 2xy squared. If we had been given these three monomials instead where this was 2xy squared, we only would have been able to pull out a single factor of y because we would have been limited by the fact that we only have one factor of y here. But we had two of them here and two of them here. So our greatest common factor still would have been 2xy, but that wouldn't have been the same as sort of our smallest factor 2xy squared here. So we have to be really careful whenever we're finding a greatest common factor to break each monomial down into its prime factors for the whole numbers or the constant coefficients and for each of our variables, and then make sure that we're really deliberate when we're looking for common factors to build into our greatest common factor.